Not too long ago, we left Governor Burke grieving at the death of his dear wife in May 1832. On the other hand, in, in a digression, John MacArthur, in his grief over the death of his younger son, John, had delusions that the poor boy had been poisoned. There you go, poor old John MacArthur. Hey, it's Michael Bishel, Australian historical fiction writer here again, and we'll continue on with the story of, of Whig Governor Richard Burke and his sojourn in the colony of New South Wales up to 1838. Now, in 1832, Burke, as a progressive governor, wanted to improve the infrastructure in New South Wales. He introduced improvements to the post office as well. The Herald newspaper praised Burke and said that it was another indicator that the people of New South Wales were ready for British institutions. Now, Burke did have a compatriot of like mind in Francis Forbes, about which we've seen a bit earlier. Francis Forbes was a Whig as well, and on the 26th of January 1833, a meeting was called to discuss a petition to London to form a legislative assembly in New South Wales, not just a le legislative council. This was the start of many battles to have a representative legislature you know, re that represented all citizens, of which we have today. Now, concerning the transport of convicts to New South Wales, now there was one particular incident which, which, which had a galvanising effect for starting to form a movement for ending transportation, this particular incident. Governor Burke started to amend the immigration of convicts to place them with free settlers in the bush. Now, there were those settlers in the Hunter region who were conservatives and who believed that convicts were to be treated no better than slaves. And in some instances, these convicts were getting beyond themselves. And in some cases, the lack of discipline eventuated. Now Major Moody had come to Sydney in 1822 to take up a grant at Patrick's Plains around the Wiseman's Ferry area of Sydney. For the next 10 years, Major Moody weathered the hardships of this harsh country, the scrub, the heat, the flies, the natives, and the quality of soil. According to Moody, after Burke had arrived in the colony, the convict's lazy indifference because of Burke's weak tendencies had turned to truculence and insubordination. Moody went along to regularly flog for months nine of his servants who were convicts. One of these convicts, he, he, he escaped, he, he had to get out of there. And with his two compatriots went back to Moody's station and ransacked the place, stealing the stores and threatening the women. The mounted police chased down the miscreants and arrested them. Now, okay, now they, they did break the law, but so harshly. They were brought to Sydney and tried before Francis Ford, Forbes, the convicts pleading that their lives were misery and they were under threats of death every day. Now, most of these poor men were executed on the 21st of December, but the two remaining prisoners had a very ignominious and cruel road to their deaths. They travelled by sea to the Hunter River where they were placed on their own coffins and tied to them for the journey back to Moody Station. You can imagine, there's no shock absorbers on these, on these journeys. They were so exhausted by the time they were still hanged when they got there. The gallows remaining there for months as a warning to evildoers. It's like medieval times. This incident, like the My All Massacre of Aboriginals, was branded on the history of New South Wales and still stuck around for years until the British abandoned transportation in the 1840s. Burke sent an inspection to Patrick's Plains to Moody Station to find out what the real extent of convict management was all about and, and, and did these convicts have a, have a sort of a, a real argument. But the convicts had a weak case, it all came back. Now the incident also raised hysterical discussion of the convict transportation system. And some say that Burke openly courted the convicts, wanted to be popular with them. We don't know about that. Now Richard Burke died in his beloved Thornfield in Ireland in 1855, surrounded by friends and well-wishers. So, there we have Governor Richard Burke, one of the only progressive governors among the category of Tories to administer the colony of New South Wales in the early colonial period, 1822 
1838. Richard Burke was a reformer and he did seek popularity probably to his detriment among the convicts but he left the colony in an advanced stage on its way to being a proper nation. I'm Michael Bischel. We've got a couple more videos to go. I'll see you next time. Thank you.